it's another week and I'm back in my little corner of the internet to talk to you about money. In today's video, I want to talk about a process I learned about a few years ago, which really helped me get clarity on my finances. It's called a financial checkup and it's really useful if you know all the things that you should be doing, but find it a little bit overwhelming to decide which action to start with. A financial checkup is a little bit like a health checkup or taking your car in for a service in that it gives you a good top level understanding of what's working, what's not working. And then from there, I'm also going to show you how you can use that information to take strategic action so that you can grow your wealth in a way that makes sense for you. Okay, then step one is to start with a snapshot of your net worth. So to fill you in, just in case your net worth constitutes your assets, which are the things that you own that have value and ideally over time will generate more wealth for you. Whereas your liabilities are things that cost you money. So what you want to do is get these items into a table and I'm going to show you what that looks like. On the left in the green, you can see the assets and their corresponding value. Then on the right in orange, you have your liabilities with their corresponding values. So the first thing you want to do is calculate the total of your assets. Then you're going to calculate the total of your liabilities. Then to calculate your net worth, you are going to subtract your liabilities from your assets and you will get a total. In this example, it's positive. Yours might be a negative number. That's OK. The idea here is that this number is a benchmark so that you can measure your progress moving forward. Ultimately, you're aiming to increase your assets and get rid of your liabilities completely. But getting rid of your liabilities in one foul swoop is probably not an option for you. We need to tackle this step by step. And this takes us to step two. In this step, you need to take a good hard look at your liabilities column because not all liabilities are created equal. So what you want to do at this stage is figure out just how much of a liability each liability actually is. And here I want to mention something that you may have heard of good debt versus bad debt. Good debt is debt that over the long run contributes to an asset. So your mortgage is an example of this because at the end of the day, you have a house to show for it. Another thing that could be considered good debt is your student loan because education increases your earning ability over the long run. Bad debt is neither of those things. So your credit card bills that you racked up on impulse buys, that is definitely in the bad debt column. The other thing that you can think about while you're going through your liabilities column is the cost of your debt. So there is more expensive debt, credit card being a prime example of expensive debt, and then there's less expensive debt. So if you do have a 7% interest on your credit card and a 4% interest rate on a small business loan that you've taken out, the credit card debt is going to cost you a lot more money over the long run. So with those things in mind, you can prioritize your debt accordingly and then take a closer look at your asset column. OK, so you've ranked your liabilities and now you want to dive deep into your asset column. The questions that you ask yourself here are what, if anything, are you able to tackle immediately? And what kind of things in your asset column will make you feel really good in the sense that it will have a direct positive impact on your life today. So an example of this could be that you carrying low level stress around because your savings pot is empty. Maybe topping up your savings pot with a small monthly amount is going to be really good for your mental health. But that's just an idea because at this point you are still gathering information. There is still no action and you don't even have to make any decisions about your action yet. And that's because in order to make informed decisions, you first need to understand how much money you have to play with. In other words, you need to track your spending. So your net worth calculations give you a top level view of your overall financial situation, but they don't reflect your day to day money habit. And if you want to start tackling your net worth, you need to understand how much money you really have available. If you don't already track your money using a budget tracker, get on that. Or you could go old school and do a money diary with pen and paper. That also works. The idea is that you want to 
understand where your money is going each month in a typical month and be able to distinguish between optional versus required expenditure. And with that information, you can start to see where there are opportunities to wiggle your money around. Could you take some money and put it towards a short term goal to pay off your credit card or your car loan, for example? And because this is the last piece of the data gathering puzzle, we're now at the point where you can start thinking about action. So we're getting to the exciting bit. So step five is about prioritizing your actions and putting a plan together. You know what your biggest liabilities are, you know what your asset situation is, and you understand how much cash you have available to play with. Now you want to make a list of the most important thing for you to tackle. Here I want to highlight that this exercise is not strictly about the numbers on your spreadsheet. Your feelings come into this a lot as well. So what I mean by that is you might find that there are certain items either in your asset column or your liability column that cause you extra stress. So maybe lack of a savings pot is really freaking you out. You want to tackle that first, even though the credit card debt might be higher or more expensive. So all of this is a bit of a balancing act and some of it at least is led by your emotions and that's totally fine. The good news is that there also is no rule against tackling multiple items simultaneously. For example, you might find that you can put 5% of your salary into your savings pot each month and 10% into paying down your car loan, for example. The trick here really is choosing an action plan that feels right to you. It doesn't have to be perfect because, to be perfectly honest, this is the kind of thing that you should be revisiting in six months or a year anyway. You're just making the best decision with the information that you have. And that's it! You've done it, you've made it this far, you've done your financial checkup, you have a list of priority action steps, now all that's left to go do is uh, make it happen. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.